Welcome everyone to This Land Is Mine virtual live stream. I'm Vanetta Lopez, your host. Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us, uh, especially to all our viewers on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we, we really want to thank you for joining us today. It's very exciting. This is such an epic production. So let me just give you a little background on This Land Is Mine. So it takes us back to post-World War II in the 1940s, when Singapore returns to British rule after four years of Japanese occupation. So the lives of several individuals are thrown into upheaval by the turbulence of the times as they fight for their identities. And this show is part of the Lights Camera Singapore Initiative. So it's, uh, it started and was born from Mediacorp, and it's all about championing local stories by Singaporeans for Singaporeans. So This Land is Mine is definitely a local drama adapted from a local book told through the lens of a local director. And who is the author? Well, it's print to screen of Walter Wound's novel. It's called The Devil's Circle, and it features a stellar cast who you are going to meet in just a little while. So... When do we get the pleasure of watching this show? It is premiering on National Day itself, 9th August, 9.30 p.m. on Channel 5 and Me Watch, and streaming on 17th August on Mediacorp Drama on YouTube. Now, we do ask you to stay with us right to the end of this little get-together because there will be a contest at the end of this live stream. So stay tuned for a chance to win a 12-month Me Watch Prime subscription and a $50 grab food voucher. So it is time now to introduce our stellar cast to say a few words and say hi to you guys. So let's start off with the man, uh, the leading man of the show who plays Dennis. Please welcome Pierre Peng. Hi, Pierre. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm <laughs> Pierre Peng. I play Dennis Chung, the senior legal assistant at the Almeida and the Almeida. It is so good to see you on the big screen on Channel 5. You've been on Channel 8 for so it's long. It's good to be back. <laughs> It is so nice to have you. So you mm -hmm. are the senior legal assistant. You're returning from England. Uh, mm -hmm. So Dennis, he struggled to find his place in the community amidst his first case of defending a Kempatai torturer. So okay, yes. in three quick words, describe Dennis. Um, I would say Dennis is uh, conflicted. He, uh, he's still deciding if he wants to give his client a good defense or to throw him under the bus for all the atrocities committed during the war. Uh, mm. He's unyielding. He is very certain. He wants to make his father proud. And uh, he's learning, still learning how to let go of the past and move on into the future. Definitely can be a lawyer. You see, I asked for three words. You gave me about 25. <laughs> <laughs> must explain yeah, what you mean by wonderful. unyielding, conflicted. <laughs> so you're returning from England in this show, mm. so I expect a very British accent. Huh? Okay, moving on. No, no. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, your leading lady in the show, Pierre, is the very lovely Rebecca Lim playing June. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello, always a pleasure to see you. And we have so many fans of yours here on Facebook and Instagram as well. So <laughs> you play a legal clerk at D. Almeida and D. Almeida, and you are Dennis's cousin, a uh, well-educated girl uh, for that era especially. She goes against all odds to prove her capabilities. She seeks justice for those around her and ultimately for herself. So in three words, or more if you like, since Pierre like, you know, <laughs> broke the mold, uh, describe June. <laughs> Well, I would describe June as someone who is resilient, courageous, and compassionate. Wonderful. You know, June really is one of my favorite characters to date, you know, because, and to be able to play a, a character based on a novel written by Professor Walter Woon, The Devil's Circle, it really feels like I've come full circle because I used to study his company law books back in university. <laughs> so wow. to be a part of this drama, it really is pretty surreal. <laughs> wow, talk about really uh, sucking up to the professor. It's too much. Uh. <laughs> Come <laughs> favor. Hello. Thanks, <laughs> you graduated already, no? You don't have to impress anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Rebecca. <laughs> That's right, we'll pretty cool, yeah. It is pretty cool, isn't it? So we'll go back to you in just a little bit. One of the very passionate, other passionate characters in the show playing Habibullah is Shabir. Hi, Shabir. Hey, Vanetta. How are you? Good to see you. I'm very good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So you play, now I've been practicing the name Habibullah. You got okay? it right. <laughs> very right, yes. And you play now former lieutenant 
from the Bujpur Regiment. How did I say that yeah, right? You, you're doing good. Don't worry. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So you play a highly celebrated ex-war hero, returning with dignity after losing his arm during the war, now having to defend his troops who are being bullied by some British soldiers. So, in three words, describe your character, Habibullah. So I play Major Habibullah Khan, aka the Tiger of Rangoon, and uh, three words would be uh, loyal, compassionate, yet brutal. Wow. Okay. And in the trailers, I see he 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 goes through a lot. It seems. Yeah. We'll get into uh, the difficulties that you had during filming in just yeah. a while. Meantime, onto our next stellar cast member playing Helen Sim, Singapore's own Matahari. It's Sora. Hi, Sora. Hi. I just need you to. I think maybe uh, if you're you're muted, we need you to get you unmuted. Yo, we can't hear you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody! Hi, I played uh, Helen in the show. Wonderful. And Helen is a manager of the nightclub and the girls within, and yeah. she takes on a role far darker, shady, and more questionable than publicly known. So, please, mm. in three words, describe Helen Sim. I would say that uh, she is secretive, intelligence, and influential. Right, she's got the power to influence people around her. Yes. Okay, social network quite large. Yeah. Okay. And I hear that your fashion in this show is out of this world. So we'll get into that later on as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on to our next wonderful cast member playing Nakamura, a warrant officer of the Kempetai. It is Sugi. Please welcome Sugi. Hi, Sugi. Hello. You got to unmute yourself. Okay, all cast members. <laughs> <laughs> can't hear you. You are unmuted. But for some reason, we can't hear you, is it? Ah, okay. Never mind. Tell you what, Sugi. Sign it to us. No, just kidding. Sugi, just hang on. We'll come back to you, okay? <laughs> Meantime, we want to go ahead and say hi to the one who plays Ahmad, Joe Jasmine. Hi, Joe. Hello, Joe. <laughs> Hi. Okay. So you play D. Almeida and D. Almeida's former driver. Uh, yes. Yeah. So in your story, it's so, oh my goodness, heart-wrenching. Uh, his wife passed away during the war and he had to look after his kampong and his family now left under his care alone, uh, which includes his adopted daughter, Mariam. So what lengths will he go to keep her with the family? Three words, Joe, to describe um, uh, Ahmad that you're playing. Uh, loyal, patient, and even-tempered. Even-tempered, right. Yes. Okay, are you sure or not? I'm going to test your patience later on, you know. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Okay. We'll chat to you in just a little while because you had a wonderful set to work with. So uh, everybody loves nostalgia and you really delved into it during your time uh, on the show. So um, in just a while, yeah. Uh, okay, Meantime. Thank you. Moving on to a character named Joe, played by a Mr. Charlie Go. Hi, Charlie. Hello, everybody. Hello. So you play hi, half hi, Chinese, hi. half Japanese. Yes you, yes. you often served as a bridge between the Japanese and the locals, but unfortunately also treated with caution and suspicion by both sides. Yes. Oh. Yeah, one, two. Yep. Okay. Okay. So three words to describe you. uh, your character, Joe. Uh I think as you can see from the picture, I got the worst picture out of all the cast. Oh, Everybody what? looks so good. <laughs> I would say uh, sneaky, mm -hmm. uh, he's quick-witted, and, uh, and he's a survivor. Right. Yeah. You got a naughty boy face in that picture with those glasses, the yeah, severe yeah, glasses. Yeah, there's no way this guy's a good guy in the show. La. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure everybody has some sort of redeeming factor and quality, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or maybe not. We shall see. All right. We'll come back to you in a while, Charlie. <laughs> Uh, in the meantime, let's see. We have, um, let's go back to Sugi. Sugi, are you, uh, you coming in, Sugi? Sugi, who plays Nakamura. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we All can right. hear you, Sugi. Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Um, uh, I played Nakamura, a warden officer, uh, and I'm Sugi. Nice to be here. Yeah, and you yeah. you are a torturer in this show. My mm -hmm. goodness. So did you enjoy yourself? <laughs> uh, I, I, I can see it in your eyes that you would definitely enjoy it if you play Nakamura, right? Huh? 
Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, okay, you were charged. The character was charged with several right. accounts of murder and torture. Who, for yes. some reason, refuses to defend himself through his trial, and in which case, he will likely face a death sentence. So, what's going on behind Nakamura and his story? So, three words to describe your character, Sugi. Pain, stubborn, and uh, conflicted. Wow. And uh, you know. Uh, uh, In contrary to Pierre, you know, um, <laughs> long description. I have to keep mum. Uh, just watch the show. I can hear Pierre going. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wonderful, All right. Sugi. We'll get back to you in just a while. An interesting right. background, by the way. So it's, it looks like a prison. All right. So you spend your life on the show like that, and also here. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but it's lunch time now, lah. So we are out oh, of the cell. I yeah. see. That's good. That's yeah. good. Okay. And last but definitely not least, we have with us today the the one who carry who parry who plays the character Mariam. Please welcome Ellie. Hi, Ellie. Hello, Patang, everyone. Nice to meet you. Hello. So Ellie Gaskell, you play Mariam, but mm-hmm. born born Margaret Baron by birth. Yes. So never knowing what home was until the Japanese occupation, where she was adopted and finally blended in, everything was fine. But then her long lost aunt comes knocking, wanting to bring her back to England, and now she has to decide who her true family is. So three words, Ellie, to describe Mariam. Yeah, I would probably describe Mariam as kind. Mature. She has to be mature to go through all these decisions, and I would say she's family oriented. Wow. Well, you know, um, I think taking on a character like this must have had so many challenges. So we'll get back to you in just a while. Okay, Ellie. Thank you. All right. So we will delve more into the stellar cast of This Land Is Mine in just a while. That's our cast. But before we move on to chat with、um, with more interesting and amazing people, the ones responsible for making this epic production, here are some highlights of This Land Is Mine. If you keep looking back, you'll never see what's in front of you. You want me to defend a Kempeitai torturer? Justice has to be done and seen to be done. Are you a lawyer? I don't like lawyers. These people, they're my family. I'm your family. I am a soldier, and my fight and my struggle. It's for the freedom of my people. I would rather sell every piece of furniture in this house to support you than have you defend a Japanese murderer. I don't know about you, but the first time I saw that, my hair stood on end, and in a very, very good way. This land is mine. Welcome back to the virtual live stream. If you've just joined us, thank you so much. And if you joined us from the very beginning, hey, welcome! Thanks for joining us on Facebook and as well on、uh, Instagram. I'm Anita Lopez, your host for today. And so we promised you some、um, insights into the making of the show. So who are the key people responsible for bringing this epic production to life? Let's take a look at who they are. Hi guys, welcome. Hi, Ben.、Oh, hello, hello. Hi, Ben. 
So we got three very, very important people who have come together to create something pretty epic here on MediaCorp. Uh, first of all, let's welcome Lee Tianjin, executive producer and director of This Land Is Mine from Where You Films. Hi, TJ. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm very good. I'm quite jealous that you're out there dining out, as I can see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Watching the rules are very terrible, terrible. Uh, yeah, don't, uh, this, this is uh, pre, this is pre, uh, pre phase two. Pre phase two, okay, <laughs> yeah. wonderful. It looks like an awesome set, I must say. Uh, this land is mine, and uh, also responsible for this show is the man who wrote the story in the first place. Please welcome former Attorney General of Singapore and author of four novels, including The Devil's Circle, which uh, This Land Is Mine is based on. Please welcome Walter Woon. Hi, Walter. Hello, glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. It's so wonderful to have you. Um, you know, it's such, you know, you attorney, former attorney general of Singapore, first of all. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> and also a novelist, you know, bringing something to life. We'll ask you more in just a while about how that absolutely felt. I mean, seeing something come to life must be quite exciting. Uh, I guess same also for the next very important person in this group. Yes, my boss. Hello. Please welcome Midi Cops head of English audience, <laughs> Sapna Angural. Hello, boss. How are you, the boss? Are you Hello, Vern. <laughs> Not your boss today. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I can't actually believe that the day has finally arrived. We've been working on this masterpiece for so many months. I mean, all of us in the team here. So yeah, very, very excited to be here. Well, I can see that a lot of hard work was put in there. The quality of this show, the cast members, the script writing, everything that's so passionate you can see coming through the screen. But how did the series come about, you know? And tell everybody why they should be excited about the show. Absolutely, my pleasure. So, I mean, you earlier mentioned uh, about Lights, Camera Singapore, which is our initiative, a cornerstone for what we want to do for the local creative circle. You know, we want to celebrate Singapore stories. Um, the heart and soul of it comes really from authentic Singapore stories, you know, that relates to uh, many, many levels. So with This Land is Mine, it was like almost we had this uh, checklist on what we wanted to do next. We had just finished uh, commissioning a series of uh, stage to screen um, um, series from Lights Come Singapore. So we did, you know, all of that. And we knew that we wanted to do what we wanted to do next had to be challenging, had to be bigger, and it had to be um, you know, injecting that hyper-local conversation into it. We also knew that we wanted to do something from the literary genre that was historical, so a period drama, if I must, right? Um, so that was a take. We wanted it to showcase the multi-language, multicultural, authentic voice of Singapore, which, you know, TJ and I have worked on another project that has been very, very successful. So we knew that we wanted to inject that in it, but also... Um, you know, we wanted a script that had the ability to cast a diverse racial background of actors who could bring their, you know, stories to life as well. So I can actually go on with how many ticks we had on this. But um, and then in my conversations with TJ, we talked about the fact that we knew that he had his hands on Devil Circle, thanks to Prof. Um, and and um, it was just about getting it into a script. And, you know, so there was the right time and the right pen. And there we are. <laughs> And, and, you, know, you seem so passionate and excited about the show. I am, know, share I am, with everybody why everyone should be excited about watching This Land Is Mine. I mean, first of all, it's it's there's a lot of soul in the story, but I think more than that, there's a lot of soul in where we are today. In in many sense, when we picked up the story, it was prior to COVID, right? Like there's a lot of conversations we didn't even know, but when we look at it, finally it actually resonates just as much today. I mean, look at the way we are dealing with the situation. We are in unprecedented times of, of a different sort of war in that sense. You know, all of us are dealing with it on, on a regular basis. So I really hope this series connects with you. It is something that you can watch with your family, watch it with your grandparents, your children, your family, your friends, your neighbours. And I think that's the reason why I think people should watch it. And authentically, it's about the struggles that we've come across as a nation and you know overcoming and it's we believe it's our you know birthday present to singapore so you know we can, I, we're very very proud yeah and what an ideal date for it to be premiered yeah Absolutely. <laughs> on national Absolutely. day wow Absolutely. thank you sir now thank you um walter you know what was it like seeing devil circle come to life on screen this is something mm -hmm. i mean for example how long did you take to write the book how is it long has it been in your heart well, um, I can't remember how long it took, probably a year or more. But, you know, when I first talked to TJ, we didn't dream 
that we'd have COVID. Mm-hmm. So it's it's wonderful the job that TJ and the team did under very difficult circumstances and overcome the obstacles. Uh, it's an adaptation rather than straight, um, you know, um, based on yeah. the book kind of thing. Um, for one thing, one of the major characters, because of medical reasons, had to be written out of the story, Clarence oh. Dalmeida. Oh. So uh, the book and the series stand on their own. It's an adaptation. And TJ and the team really did a great job. And do you feel very proud right now seeing it come to life? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, uh, you know, it's, you know okay. this is but seeing them in the flesh is oh, wonderful. Professor, admit it, you cried, didn't you, the first time you saw the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> I would. I my hands. <laughs> So now, you know, we actually uh, asked some uh, people on Instagram, you guys, thank you so much to submit your questions. And uh, this is a question that came up from, uh, I do believe, LJR, uh, uh-huh. underscore JR, asking, why is it called This Land is Mine, even though the book is called The Devil's Circle? Yeah, sure. I mean, I can uh, give you a bit of insight, but teacher, do feel free to add in as well. So first of all, like what Prof mentioned, it's not a... Uh, uh, a direct translation of sort is an adaptation. So, you know, we thought that we would do that. Uh, we've done the best to its ability to keep the key points from the, the original book. So if you look at This Land is Mine um, as a title, it is almost a statement, right? So it's almost like someone making a statement. It's almost a statement of an identity of a nation. So where the story is said is at, at that point, we had people who wanted a piece of this land, like, you know, the Japs tried it, the British had their way. And then, you know, people were still struggling to say, is this mine? Is this yours? Whose is it? So it needed to make that statement. And, you know, of course, some of us joked about it, like, you know, it would probably been a lot more straightforward Singaporean if it was this land is mine, la. But, you know, that's <laughs> or, exactly... Or, or this land, or, my one. This my land, my, my one. one. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, when everyone is trying to take a piece of you, you sort of struggle with the fact that what is my identity? Who am mm. I? So I think the locals wanted that piece. So we came up with a couple of titles. This sort of just stood up and, you know, and, and it just kind of gave us those goosebumps to say, it's got to be this because I can call it mine. You can call it yours. Anyone can call it. Um, and that's why I think it just is um, a perfect way to call out a story that is 100% simple. And it's also a way for each individual character with their own yeah, struggles to relate. of, of yeah. uh, you know, making concrete their identity as a Singaporean coming yeah. out of the war. Wonderful. Okay, my hair is standing even more now. Okay, I need my hairdresser now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> TJ, um, as a director, you know, bring this thing to life. This, I mean, look at the pictures behind all of us. These are pictures from the set. Yes. You know, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. It is so beautiful, so authentic. And it's set, of course, in post-World War II Singapore. So as with any period drama, what are the most interesting period props or costumes that viewers can watch out for? I think one of the biggest challenges that we 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 faced. Um, I mean, I, more often than not, um, a, a lot of period dramas uh, are filmed at least partially, kind of across across the causeway, simply because uh, resources are more readily available there. But um, because of uh, the COVID situation, we had to move everything back to Singapore. So one of the uh, challenges we faced initially was: could we find, you know, the could we build the sets here? Could we find the locations here? And could we find the props, you know, the period props that we needed? Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I think uh, by the end of the production, the answer was a resounding yes. We managed to, I, I mean, um, we managed, we went We went uh, quite local on everything. Nice. Um, in fact, actually, uh, three of my, uh, three of my favorite props were actually uh, sourced um, from, from Singaporeans. Um, uh, locally, I, and and uh, one of them, I think one of them, which I, I really liked was the 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 chairs, the judges' chairs that we used in the show. Um, these apparently, uh, as we understand, were actually from the uh, former Supreme Court themselves. So these uh, are the authentic actual chairs. Uh, as we understand it, 
I, I don't know if there's any way to verify it. underneath got signature not carving. Yeah, we were, we're looking to see whether it got anything that will tell us whether, you know, whether, it, you know. If got chewing gum, if got chewing gum stuck underneath it, right? Yeah. <laughs> then you know yes. it's free. <laughs> but we ended up using, we ended up uh, buying three of these chairs and uh, you can see them in the courtroom scenes Yeah, in, in the show. Um, as a couple of these characters uh, will actually go on trial, you know, for variously sedition and and murder. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, another less, I guess, uh, on a on a lighter note, um, another prop which we 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 sort of used, uh, well, at least once was this uh, spittoon. Okay. Um, <laughs> Mass spittoon. Yes, um, which was used by our leading man, Pia Peng. What do you um, mean? How do he use it? Uh, well, I think if you want to know which bodily function it entertained from Pierre, you probably you know watch the show. Um, oh I no! Won't spoil it for you. I won't spoil it for you here. Yeah, but you can't see the I episode number as well, right? <laughs> yeah, I would say his character actually uses it in the show. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, it's a spittoon, but I don't know. It's the way you're speaking, it might have been a different kind of bodily function we're talking well, about. Yes, I know. When you say spittoon, it has one one connotation. One but, connotation yeah, could have been but, something else. But do tune in to find out. You know. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything else? Uh, well, there the 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 other thing that we found in a small kind of a, a shop in Chinatown that sold antiques was was a steamboat, which we also understand is is from the period itself. Um, and we use that in um, in the in the show's uh, season finale. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, it wasn't in this condition when we found it. Um, our art team uh, actually it, it was uh, our art team actually polished it up and made it look brand new. Um, uh, but just to be safe, we didn't allow anyone to actually eat from it. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's acting. So what you see there is, yeah, acting. Right. But it does look right. very delicious and very yeah. authentic. Wonderful. Well, seeing the cast in action, you know, has been very exciting for everybody because what a stellar cast. Walter, you know, this is your book, your character. When you when you created them in your mind, what were your thoughts and opinions on the casting choices for the characters in your novel? You know, any choices stand out for you? Were they spot on? It's great to see them. Because, you know, when you write, you have a certain picture. And Shabir as Habibullah and uh, Sora as Helen are spot on. What I imagine. But Pierre and Rebecca are too good looking, frankly. (laughs) (laughs) It's not a complaint. It's better this way. But, you know, when I read the book and when I write the next next book, that's the image that's going to move the story in a little bit different direction. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, you haven't seen any episodes yet, so are you excited? Yeah, I'm going to binge watch. I'm going to record the whole lot and binge watch because I don't like cliffhangers. <laughs> oh, I see, I see, I see. So, you know, guys, yeah, all three of you were involved in this. I mean, what were the most challenging and exciting aspects of collaborating on, on this period drama, especially in contemporary and very modern Singapore? Like... Uh, uh, I, mean, TJ, I can, I can yeah. start off by saying that, you know, from a commissioning perspective, we wanted to bring this story as soon as possible, right? And then, you know, COVID hit us. So <laughs> I don't think there was a bigger challenge than that. Like everything True. needed to be recalibrated, right, TJ? Yeah, I, I think one, one of the biggest challenges was actually producing it um, uh, uh, yeah, during, during a very challenging time, I think, for everyone, you know, not just in Singapore, but all over the world. Mm-hmm. So, for sure. yeah. So what I is think- your, yeah, I mean, you oh. know, if you think about COVID and then you have to find that plus looking at s- sets which are authentic to the scene, I mean, that must have been crazy difficult in Singapore, especially. But I think, yeah, kudos to, you know, the, the, the team behind the show, it, behind the camera and in front of the camera. I think, um, I think everyone, uh, everyone delivered and uh, on, on many levels. So TJ, you know, as being director as well, do you have a favorite scene from the show? Um, I have a favorite scene in every single episode of this show. So. <laughs> okay, now you got to choose one from the but, entire show. Yeah. But one of my favorite scenes was was uh, is a favorite scene because uh, just by the virtue of us actually managing to finish filming this scene because um, <laughs> this was yeah this was done on actually for me personally one of the most difficult days of the entire four month shoot. 
Um, we rehearsed this scene, I think, um, in the morning, and we were supposed to shoot it after lunch. Um, uh, but as we were starting to uh, set up for the scene, it started raining. Mm -hmm. And then um, we, we stopped. And then uh, when the rain subsided, we went out. And then it rained again. <laughs> so this happened, this happened throughout the entire afternoon. We had, uh, we had um, you know, you can see the sheer number of people in this scene. We had all these people sort of standing by waiting for the weather to get better. And as the evening, as the afternoon turned into evening, um, we realized that um, it wasn't going to get better. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to make a decision. I mean, I had to huddle with my producer um, and we had to make a decision whether we were going to, you know, just go ahead and shoot it or we were actually just going to try to give up and, you know, come back another day when, when we didn't even know if, you know, half of these people would be available. Wow. So we went ahead and shot it. Uh, it's, you can actually still see the drizzle on, uh, on the actors' uniforms and, you know. Yeah. And we finished it just before last light. So again, I mean, this is, I think, a good example of, you know, uh, teamwork. And we had to do it all. And we ended up doing it all in one single take. So nice. Yeah. So, I think uh, teamwork with a capital a, T. Yeah. A precious scene. What episode is this? Uh, this is somewhere midway through the series. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't show any more. Cannot pecah lobang. Okay. Sabna, what is your favorite scene? Oh, man. That's such a difficult question. I. I have so many, but I would say that I tend to ask myself, most of it is the intro of the characters. My favorite oh. scenes are the intro of the characters. Like, yes, I love the, the way, I mean, the way Mariam comes oh. into the series, that introduction. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've watched a couple of times the entrance of Shabir to Habibullah's um, entry to the show. The hair still stands the same way. It's, yeah, I think the way um, TJ has brought in the character introductions, uh, those tend to be some of my favorites. But there's so many of them. I could go on and I'll give up the show and then I'll not be here again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Walter, I can't ask you which is your favorite scene because you haven't seen the show yet. So right. we'll get back to you right? when, we, when, we, uh, when we show the show. Remember, once again, thank you everybody for joining us on Facebook as well as on Instagram. The show is premiering on National Day. And uh, let's see. Now, I just want to have one last question. Um, uh, what, um, what can fans expect of the novel except from the, you know, from the series adaptation, because maybe for those who have read the book and now the, the, the screen, I'm, I'm sure you see the screenplay, so you know kind of what's happening. Is there a big difference for, for fans of your novel? Yeah. yeah, well, yes, as I said, um, it's an adaptation. Um, TJ and his team had to, to uh, you know, flesh it out for 15, 15 episodes and removing Clarence Dalmeda does make uh, a difference. Think of them as separate works. It's like, um, you know, Miyazaki Goro's adaptation of Azula Lagin's uh, Earthsea. They're separate works. They stand on their own merits. And I hope the ones who read the book will have a look and <laughs> see what they think and how Okay. How it works. Because some people read the book and they go, oh, please, it was never as good as the book. So don't poo-poo. It stands on its own. Fabulous. Now, The Devil Circle, as well as other Walter Wounds e-books, are available for loan via the National Library Board, uh, also known as the NLB mobile app. Okay, so please take a look at the book. And remember to stay with us uh, because... Uh, we will be asking you a question later, so stay tuned to participate in the contest at the end of this live stream. You stand a chance to win a 12, month, uh, 12 months of MeWatch Prime subscription and a $50 Grab Food voucher, okay? So let's bring the cast back on screen. They've been pa waiting patiently. Meantime, thank you very much, TJ, Walter, and Sapna. And let's welcome our fabulous cast, all of them looking fabulous, and I'm sure very excited for the premiere of the show. Hi, guys! Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, um, a lot of uh, viewers uh, actually are very excited also, not just for the show, but also what happens behind the scenes. I think when people get to know what actually happened on set, it gets very exciting. So, they want to know some of your weird moments or habits, okay? So, for example, the first question we have out there, who has the weirdest routine, Okay, hmm. to think about it. Coming on to set, weirdest routine. Well, you actors are huh? all oh, very weird, no? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, don't reveal just yet. Don't make any guesses just yet. But we do encourage our uh, viewers on Facebook to participate, okay? Put in your guesses and maybe why you think this person has this weird habit in the live comment box and we will get the cast to tell us who later on, okay? Meantime, let's get to know a bit more uh, of our cast and their characters. Let's start with Dennis, uh, played by Pierre mm. Pung. Pierre, it is so good to see you on Channel 5 once again. And look at that bow tie. Did you enjoy the bow tie? <laughs> Very much. My favorite. My oh. favorite bow tie. Why are you looking good? What was the <laughs> hardest part of your role? You know, because it's a very intense character, I feel, and very conflicted at the same time. Uh, well, for me, I think the hardest part about playing Dennis was uh, to be anti-Japanese, like he was. Uh, because I, I myself, I, I love Japanese food. I love the people. I love the culture. So it was very hard to understand what the people back then in Singapore went through, what they suffered and what they had to endure. Um, all I can say is war doesn't do anything for anyone. It just, sure. well, it brings out the worst. And uh, only in very few occasions do you see the best of mankind. So right. war is uh, it's hell. no good. Yeah. It's not good, which is why it always irritates me when certain governments, right? It's only just one or two people in history, right? Just one or two people who want to take over the world and then everybody has to fight and behind them and they, while they sit on their desk yeah. and go, oh yeah, you all do, do that. Sure, fair enough. Um, Pierre, it is uh, uh, just looking at that bow tie and that vest. Looking good, looking good. <laughs> now you have, of course, your, I would say leading lady, but then again, she plays your cousin. All right, so it's mm. Rebecca who plays June. Hi, Rebecca. How are Hi. you? Hi. For once, we are not romantically linked, Pierre and I. <laughs> Light of it, right? Enough. <laughs> uh, but you are the leading lady of the show. Uh, you play June. So tell us, what is the most rewarding part of uh, playing your character, June? Well, actually, it, the entire experience was extremely re rewarding because June is such an inspiring character. She has such strength that she is willing to display um, in spite of all the difficulties and tribulations that she had to go through. And every day on set, it just makes me appreciate everything that I have now because um, Singapore has peace. I have a job that I love. I have a family. Um, and especially for women, you know, to be able to play June in the 1940s, a very strong character, that to me is a huge honour because women then weren't given the opportunities and the freedom that we have now. So to be able to portray that on the screen, um, that was a, a, a huge reward for me. And it also helps me to appreciate all the hardships and the sacrifices that the people before us had to go through to let us enjoy what we have today. So don't take what we have today for granted, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. People like June, you know, back then they fought so hard for our so independence. So hard, yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's not complain too much. Like, Y'all go get vaccinated, okay? <laughs> Whoever's not vaccinated yet. <laughs> Thanks, June. We really do look forward to uh, what to see what June goes through uh, because you do work in the same office with Dennis' character, right? With Dennis. Yes. Okay. Our next uh, cast member, I mean, you look at the, uh, the sizzled uh, shots that we saw. Habibula goes through quite a tough time, played by the one and only Shabir. Hi, Shabir. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good, Vern. How are you feeling? Fabulous. You know, it's good nice. to see you guys. I mean, Shabir, you are music, production, and now acting, everything. You've done all this all your life. <laughs> what was the most difficult thing, playing a one-handed soldier? <laughs> I think apart from all the uh, psychological complexities and layers that Habibullah yes, has, what was really challenging is the <laughs> physical pain that I had to go through to play this character because I got I had to keep my arm like binded at the back all the time, oh. and the the thing is that I had to do it while sitting, while walking, while running, while doing praying sequences and even doing fight sequences. And the thing is, if you know a thing or two about boxing, the left. The left hand is so important, you see. The jab is so important. South and I, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> whether you're southpaw or orthodox, you know, your jab is important. But right now, you've got to fight with a single arm. So how do you take the stance? You know, these kind of things. But it was really interesting because it gave me a lot to think about. And then, of course, I had to do a lot of yoga to stretch up and stuff. If not, you know, my back will get really stiff and will start hurting and all that. So, yeah, the physical pain was real uh, playing Habibullah. 
Plus, you know, person a person without a left arm, their body movements is should be the way it would naturally be anyway. So to have your arm bound behind, it changes things a little bit. So my yeah. goodness. Yeah, that was, that was quite a challenge, quite a challenge. And sometimes the cam is like moving and you got to move the arm with you because you don't want it to get caught in the camera. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. <laughs> TJ put you through the ringer. <laughs> he did, he did. This is this is by far the most uh, challenging role I've essayed. I think. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Shabe. We look forward to watching Habibullah and uh, his passion on screen as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, so let's uh, do a little recap here. Let's break, uh, take a tiny little break to see uh, how we're doing with the BTS question, uh, meaning behind the scenes question. Okay, who has the weirdest routine? A big hello once again to all our viewers on Facebook as well as to um, Instagram and. And uh, so the question we did ask was, who has the weirdest routine? And do we have any comments coming in? Any guesses? Tell you what, Rebecca, do you have any guesses on who has the weirdest routine? Well, actually, everyone kind of has a, a little weird routine oh, <laughs> in really? their own way. <laughs> yeah, but, Great um, tell and share. <laughs> oh, wow. If I really had to choose one, I think it would be... Shabir. Hey, what? Really has, <laughs> what is that? Really weirdo, weirdo. <laughs> oh my god. The one with the most weird vibes is Pierre, la, for sure. I mean, how can you listen to Oh, we knew that. <laughs> He's oozing weird vibes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so on Facebook, we got equal votes for weirdest routine. Ellie, Shabir, and Nakamura. Oh they didn't tell oh. us why, though. I hope they told us why. Mm. Oh, weirdest oh, no. routine. <laughs> Any other guesses? Uh, Charlie, who do you think is the weirdest routine? Uh, actually, I don't have a lot of scenes with the rest of the cast, so uh, I'm just going to go with Pierre. Pierre says Ellie is weird, has a weird routine. <laughs> You're bullying her, huh? <laughs> Pierre, uh, Pierre, Pierre, why, why, why do you say so? No, it's true. I mean, you guys may not know this, but then uh, a lot of times we underrun or overrun when we're doing scenes, right? So poor Ellie, she's still studying, she's still in school. I would be there together with Rebecca from uh, like the first scene all the way to the last scene and poor Ellie will be there sitting on the floor doing her homework so I, I <laughs> assume this is her uh, okay so uh, that's I weird that's, that's weird that's just <laughs> life I'm, right. I'm working yeah it gives us an insight to what Pierre thinks about schoolwork, lah. <laughs> and now you know who's weird. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, he looked at my math homework and he was like, I don't get any of this. He was like, okay, <laughs> you do you. Sora, who do you think is the weird one? The weird I, one. Actually, I'm not quite sure because I'm not so <laughs> observant or I'm too into my own things. So, <laughs> but I've seen like Pierre acting, I don't know whether it's weird or not because he will uh. be using like all the props on sets to build his muscle, you know. Like, and you're right, Sora, because right? apparently Pierre <laughs> is the one with the weirdest routine. I don't know who, who gave me this information, but apparently <laughs> Pierre brought his balls See, he got balls. so embarrassed that he, that he stopped his yeah. video. And yeah. he yeah. Yeah. He's frozen. <laughs> he literally is frozen. <laughs> he brought his exercise balls onto the set. And apparently, whenever he had a spare moment in between scenes, he was off exercising. And mm. uh, this person told me that he was always seen with a cup of coffee in his hand between takes. So he's like a coffee addict, apparently. Is that true, Pierre? Oh, that, that's so true because um, I... I I need my coffee. Yes, and, honestly, uh, you get out of this, Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah, so you know, the, uh, when, okay, okay. When you're, when you're drinking no. your 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 cup of tea or your coffee, you, you can't wear your mask, right? So I constantly oh, have to remove my mask why. to have a drink and like cover myself up. So yeah, so that that got everyone laughing. I, I don't know <laughs> what's so funny about that. It, it, it wasn't about coffee in the cup, la. It wasn't coffee in the cup. Yeah. I admit it. Right? They're kettlebells. <laughs> They're not balls. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, wonderful. Next question: Who intentionally went without sleep before certain scenes in order to look tired and haggard? If anyone uh, has any guesses, please go ahead and comment in the live comment box below. Okay, uh, so let's get to know uh, Sora a little bit more, Ooh. please. Helen, hello. Yeah. So Sora, I mean, Hi. look at that wonderful teapot you're wearing, right? Oh, mm. Stunning. How on earth was it like learning to fight? In this, or fight scenes in that stunning Chi <laughs> Oh wow, definitely is a bit challenging for me because it's because it fits my body like a glove. Mm. And we only have one and only piece for each fabric. 
Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. So imagine that I have to be very cautious in order, in order not to damage my chi pao. So did you hear any like <laughs> tearing sounds while we're doing any fight scenes? Um, I'm not quite sure because I was so into doing all the kicking and the fighting scenes. And then I even have to uh, wow. use the gun to do a lot of scenes. Wow, but fortunately, the, you know, the chi pao, it has one uh, side. Slit. That is, yes. Uh, until my upper thigh so that I was able to perform a good it was high a very high hit. slit <laughs> oh, really <laughs> Rebecca extremely high <laughs> yeah but yeah. you know oh wow that's good I'm so excited then to see all the more even more excited to see the, the crazy action scenes you seem to be having in your, in your, your character mm. so okay Helen we'll, <laughs> we'll look forward to that how yeah. many cheap house did you have can you I remember I think I have Five or six, I guess. And, and they must have been tailor made to you, right? To oh, your body. yes. Yeah, oh, it fitted my body, nice. and 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 it was done before Chinese New Year. Perfect. Did you get to wear it during Chinese New Year? Uh, no, no, but uh, I, I I have to control I have to control my my food and things I eat. Yeah, appetite. Chinese yeah. Yes. And did you get to keep those dresses? I'm sure people want to know. Yeah. Mm. You uh, did. I don't know yet. I have to ask TJ and the team whether am Come I able on. to keep it. It's customized to your body. You have to keep it settled already. That's yeah, it. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sora. Thank you. And Sugi. Hello, hey. Sugi. You play Nakamura. Yes. Mm. Now, you play a guy who is in traditionally a very disliked character intensely. So, how is it like channeling that kind of character and, and playing him? It, it's really quite hard. And, um, um, well, technically, there's a lot of things to deal with with, uh, with this character. Um, the language, you know, I have to speak in um, this um, Japanese accented um, English, mm -hmm. which I actually spend a, a lot of time, uh, a special mention, a friend, uh, Tamal, thank you very much for helping me out, uh, you know, to just run me through with like files of files of how to do the accent right. Mm -hmm. I hope I did it justice. Um, and uh, yeah, and but mentally, I don't want to go. I don't. Want, I don't want. I don't really want to go there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, to understand the torturer and you know to act in front of Pierre Peng, you know, <laughs> where you go to the set and go like, um, you know, you are on this onesie and your hair is just, you know, there's no need for makeup and your and and you look at Pierre with Pretty the bow tie boy. and everything. You go like, oh sure, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of emotional yeah so i'm 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 quite messed up yeah, <laughs> yeah. i need to take like a, a break out of this uh the, this character yeah <laughs> well we look forward to seeing uh how you portray nakamura and uh and and learning his story as well thank yes, you so much yes. sugi and uh, we also have Ahmad, uh, the character played by joe hi joe hi, hello hello now, I mentioned just now, you have the one of the mm. best sets, man. You went back to the good old days of Kampong living. What was it like? Okay, uh, for, me, uh, for me, the memories of the good old days is uh, during heavy rain. Mm. Because the Kampong boys, whether they are Malay, Indian, or Chinese, were gathered near the open rain and waiting for open rain to overflow. Once it overflow, we will have a swimming competition among us. <laughs> swimming, that's right. Swimming in the long time was the best, right? <laughs> yes, that's the happy moment for us. In the right. good old days. <laughs> because, you know, that was the best swimming pool. You don't necessarily all go all the way to the beach. So I guess when it <laughs> rains, that's the best uh, resort living, man. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Joe. I mean, you know, your character has uh, got a lot of uh, emotions to, to handle. Was it tough for you? Uh, quite tough for me. Yeah. Well, uh, we look forward to, to watching more of you, Joe. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let's go back to that question behind the scenes. Who intentionally went, uh, went without sleep before certain scenes in order to look tired and haggard? So on Facebook, a lot of people voted that Rebecca and Sora <laughs> did not sleep. Are you saying that they look tired, huh? Uh, huh? <laughs> and, someone, <laughs> and how about this? Someone commented, Nakamura never sleeps. <laughs> so how do they know? Sugi, you never sleep, huh? I, I, I never sleep. Who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody also guessed that maybe it's Shabir who was the one who went without sleep before certain scenes. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm nocturnal. So if you're going to give me a 7 a.m. call time, I'm not going to sleep anyway. So yeah. <laughs> right, right. Ellie, any guesses on who that might be? Oh, I don't know. I didn't see like half the cast when we came in. So I didn't work with like um, uh, half of the cast here. But I'm going to guess... Sugi, maybe, because his character goes 
there were a lot. So if there's any character that might need to look haggard and run down, I right. I might think Suki. I kind of don't enough. need the not sleeping to look haggard, girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> Joel, any guesses on who uh, that might be? Who did not go to sleep just to look tired and haggard? Hello, Joe? <laughs> Joe. Joe Hang. We've, we've lost <laughs> the connection. Oh. Joe, as in. Uh, Which Joe? Character Ahmad. Joe or Ahmad? Uh, Ahmad, Ahmad. Who plays Ahmad? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There are two Joes here, man. One real, one, one character. So. <laughs> yes, Joe. Uh, Jasmine. Yeah. Who do you think is the one that was really tired? Uh, for me, the one who's really tired is me. <laughs> <It's your> <laughs> <girl>. <laughs> okay, the answer is it was actually Sugi. How did you manage to see? Yeah, how did you manage to see? I mean, Ellie was right, man. Spot on with the guess. Yeah, well done. Oh, well, the match question is working out. <laughs> <laughs> so, how long did you not sleep? Um, you just didn't sleep for the entire night, or just only slept one hour, two hours? Yeah, I mean, I, I because it's it's really kind of hard if you are my most of my scenes are in the prison cell, which is actually just a, a two by two or three by three uh, uh, set, mm -hmm. and most of the time it's dark and all. So I feel like I, it's really hard if you are in fresh and everything. So right. I just I just you know I'm nocturnal like like uh, Xavier. So so <laughs> we just I just go ahead and and do it, and so that I can get into this the stage because most of the time I'm staring uh, on a wall. And like you know, feeling, feeling the camera go like that. Then feeling, feeling you have to, you you know you you have to send yourself into a certain state. I guess. Yeah. My goodness. Okay. Well, that's really really good uh, inspiration. Anybody? You want to take that with you? Method oh. acting. Yeah. Method. Method. <laughs> yeah. Panislavski. <laughs> Speaking of taking things home, last question: Who took home the DL Meta and DL Meta signboard? Put your guesses in the and the uh, Facebook uh, comment box. Anybody? Um, eh, we we'll get your guesses in just a while. Okay. Meantime, Charlie, you play Joe, a half Chinese, half Japanese character. So, what challenges arose from that? I think definitely the language, uh, because I had a couple of scenes where I had to speak uh, Japanese. Do it. I, yeah, I'm. I can't remember. Bro. Do it. <laughs> Do it bro. After the scene, I just forgot everything. Okay, so, say what they say in restaurants, and they welcome you because I, we missed I, that. Uh, <laughs> arigato. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Uh, why is it? Uh, it's 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 do they say? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, what they're yeah. actually saying is, so, do you know so what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm 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 a person who is terrible at accents, and then when I had to do Japanese lines, right, I'm like, oh, I I had to ask a friend for help. A uh, a uh, uh, Singaporean who can speak Japanese. He he is half Japanese and half Singaporean. So uh -huh. I I I had to take a picture of my script and send to him, and then he voice note me. Uh, how nice. do we say that? Uh, yeah. Oh well, yeah. you know, good true friends, man, helping you out oh, there. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> well, Charlie, we look forward to that. Okay, we want to see Joe in action. And uh, last but not least, Mariam is played by Ellie. Ellie, you had to assimilate, or well, Mariam assimilated into the Malay kampong, the family, the culture. So I'm sure you also had some very mm. interesting things to go through in terms of a culture ex exchange. What did yeah. you learn from all this? Um, definitely one of the things I had to research and kind of get to know before I came in. I had to research and kind of get to know before I came in. Um, yeah, so like for dinner scenes and that sort of thing, I would have to come in, know how to eat with my hands, um, know how to wash my hands before scenes and stuff like that. I also picked up a bunch of like terms of endearment. So I actually call one of my um, Malay friends Sayang now because she was the one who helped me um, with all my Malay and stuff. And she, like Charlie, she would send me um, voice notes and stuff and help me out with that. Um, but really, it was just an honor to kind of develop a deeper understanding of this culture that exists in Singapore, which has been my home for the past 10 years. And it was especially nice to hear about um, Malay culture from Joe and also Norlina, who plays Mock. So in between shots, they would often talk to me about um, their kampong days and everything. So that was just really nice. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity. 
That's wonderful. Yeah. We really look forward to seeing you as Mariam. It Thank is so you. cool. And uh, okay, so now that we've got to know the cast a little bit more, that last question, who took home the D. Almeida and D. Almeida signboard? <laughs> and uh, most people think it was Charlie that stole the Charlie. sign. <laughs> I don't even know why. Charlie. See the naughty face, like, that's why. <laughs> oh. Okay, any <laughs> other guesses? Who, any huh? other guesses besides Charlie? Don't, uh, don't just target him, like, you know. Anybody else? I mean, it's got to be Pierre. You're a bad yeah. person. Yeah. It'll be Pierre, you're right. right. I think it's yeah. Pierre. Yeah. See? Pierre. Uh, second most Why votes me? were for Pierre, by the way, on Facebook. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Pierre. I feel like he, he made me sign something, and I feel like it could have been you the are board. You are right. What? Yeah. Okay, because right now nobody knows, okay? Nobody knows who took the DL Meda and Dima Meda signboard. It's a mystery. Ooh. Who mm. took it? Pierre, was it you? <laughs> I'm clean, Pierre. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, uh, I just say yes. I don't. Yes, la. <laughs> just I, I stop don't lying remember. Here. I don't know. It's been quite some time. It's been quite some time since. Uh, yeah, don't lie. Yeah. It's almost just, National Day. Don't lie on National Day. But it's not Christmas. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so did you take it? Um, I, I, I think uh, <laughs> the, put it correctly. Is, yes, you is, should say it was say given to my lawyer. To me. It was, it was, it was to given. It was a gift. No, no, no. Uh, I was it. Prof Hoon, could you please say something on my behalf? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Because I was asked to ask you all, okay, whoever mm. took it, can you please return it if there's a season two? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, if there's a season two, then I'm sure somehow or another it will show up. You know. <laughs> okay. okay, okay, fine. Thief, you know, you see his face on our TV, new from the very beginning. All right, so we asked some of you on Instagram stories to submit your questions and just take a look at this one. LJR underscore JR asks, um, let's see now. Pierre, no, so I'm sorry. Yeah. At Blue Tay 09, sorry. At Blue Tay 09, mm-hmm. do Pierre and Sora play a couple in the show? Hmm. Hmm. Can you answer that, or is this like a? Um, Are we? Well, I guess from the trailers, you can more or less tell that uh, Helen Sim, played by Sora Ma, has got something for Dennis mm-hmm. Chang. So uh, whether or not Dennis Chang reciprocates the the feeling is. You have to stay tuned. Okay, okay. And we had one more question on Facebook uh, from Siti Kairunisa uh, for Shabir. Shabir, how exactly did they keep your arm behind you? <laughs> so, so, of course, we were exploring the, the idea of uh, binding it or, you know, like uh, kind of taping it. But we realized that that's not going to help because, as I mentioned, if the camera is going to be over shoulder, then you're going to see it at the back. And then, you know, if the camera is like, moving around you then how do you you know work around it so i realized that the best way is to keep it like uh, forcefully keep it at the back but sometimes you know they're like hey shabu still can see the arm and i'm like okay some more inside oh my goodness <laughs> hey, that's it i cannot go inside anymore wow <laughs> you're like, you're done, I, you know? I know every time i spoke to you and i see the character i kept thinking that it was bound or taped or something at some point no i really know you were just holding it, there yeah i had to pull it back until you'll see the the fingers coming on the other side appearing on the other side then we're good and then we'll go for the take. And I think that was uh, the, the, the biggest challenge about, about playing uh, sure Habibullah. Will. Yeah. Okay, well mm. then, yoga or a sleepless <laughs> shirt, no problem yeah, yeah. <laughs> for you. <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys. This has been really, really fun. Uh, all cast members of This Land is Mine, congratulations on the show that's about to premiere. You guys look awesome in it. We can't wait to see it. So thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Thank you. All right, so but don't go anywhere. You guys remain on screen, so no, don't search for buggers, boogers in your nose or anything, okay? Because <laughs> it is contest time, okay? And we want to give you all uh, who are watching in right now uh, a, a chance to win a prize. So all you have to do is describe your first impression of this land is mine in one sentence. Okay, you've seen the trailers, you've spoken to the cars, you've got a little background. What's your first impression of this land is mine in one sentence? SMS your answers to... The number on your screen right now, 9090-9021 in this format. 
your answer, space, your full name. That's it. And send it to that number, okay? 9090902021. And uh, just that you know, WhatsApp does not qualify, okay? Y'all got to yeah, do the proper real SMS. I know it's very weird for some of you who haven't done it for a long time, but WhatsApp does not apply. Now, the 10 most creative answers will win a 12-month Me Watch Prime subscription and a $50 Grab food voucher each and is limited to one winner per household. And the organizers will contact the winners via SMS. Okie dokie. So, um, before we end, that's why we've got the cast to stay here. We just want all the cast members to, to tell everybody in one sentence why they should watch This Land Is Mine. So, let's start with Pierre. Well, uh, apart from all the cast members that you see in today's live stream, you would see very moving, very beautiful performances from stage actors like uh, Nolina Muhammad, uh, Emil Mawa, uh, Shrey. Uh, um, uh, you see... Um, oh, he's forgotten some names already. That's it. He's like, oh, panicking, panicking. panicking. Uh, you see Timothy. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I can't oh, remember panic, the names and more. the character <laughs> names, but uh, you see a lot of people who are out there performing performing in the arts, uh, yeah. them not on TV, but then on stage performers coming onto set and uh, just really putting up a very good performance. So, yes. Thank Was you. Was that one yeah. sentence? <laughs> of course, you never follow the rules. La. Rebecca, <laughs> in one sentence, <laughs> why should people watch This Land Is Mine? Well, uh, I think I have, to, I have to give more than one sentence because I really have to agree yes. with what Pierre said. You know, it's my first time working with every actor on this grid, aside from Pierre, and I really enjoy working with all of them, and I'm really hoping for a season two so that I can work with all of you again, you know, and um, This Land is Mine will be airing on National Day, so hopefully everyone will just stay home, stay safe, and catch This Land is Mine, and maybe before that, you could also watch the Media Corp NDP concert, where Shabir and I will oh, be performing yeah. Oh, yeah, as well. That's right. <laughs> a good sell, this one. Huh? <laughs> good plug, good plug. Plug right. that in there. Yes, indeed. Uh, there's a lot happening for you, for the two of you, especially on National Day, and what a great patriotic time to watch a patriotic show, right? So, yes. wonderful. Thank Thanks, Rebecca. Ellie, tell us, why should we watch This Land Is Mine? Yeah, I think this show talks a lot about identity. And um, in such a diverse nation, I think that's something really important. And I know a lot of my friends personally kind of struggle, like growing up in an international school in Singapore and moving around a lot. So I think um, this has a very important story and it might help people feel less alone. Okay. Thank you, Ellie. Wonderful. Sora, in one sentence, why should people watch This Land Is Mine? Okay, I feel that it's very unique and um, it's very special from any other uh, dramas that we have seen on the screen. Thank you, Sora. Sugi, why should we watch This Land Is Mine? Because this show is very special and this is my first Channel 5 show ever. So, yeah, so please support me, support us, support um, uh, TJ and Tim and, and the whole This Land Is Mine uh, uh, team. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sugi. Charlie, why do you think we should watch This Land Is Mine? Um, because the story is good. Uh, the writing all the way to the, the our DOP is amazing. I just saw that once, one, one shot take, right? It was so good. And uh, I feel that everybody put in so much effort and uh, it was because it was shot during COVID, it's really very difficult to do. Uh, so support local dramas, guys. For Shabir, tell us, why should we watch This Land Is Mine? I mean, apart from the obvious grandeur and uh, stellar performances and also, you know, the technical department, DP Daniel and uh, composer Alexo and of course TJ and his team, these great things as an experience. Apart from that, uh, shout to all history buffs. Like if you really like history and you like period dramas, this is really something that you should tune into and watch and really experience and enjoy. Wonderful. And last but not least, Joe, tell us in one sentence why we should watch This Land Is Mine. For me, it is the happening drama that I ever involved because there are a lot of races involved in this production. And I hope the audience will love it. 
Thank you, Joe. We look forward to watching you as well. And thank you to all the cast members. So, hey guys, perfect time now. We're almost at the end of this live stream. It's photo time. Can we have everybody? <laughs> and uh, let's snap the photo with us, okay? And then you can uh, just take a picture of the screen or put your face right next to the screen if you can and share it on your Facebook or Instagram with the hashtag MediaCorp This Land Is Mine, okay? Hashtag MediaCorp This Land Is Mine. So everybody ready to pose? Okay, give us your best, most brilliant Stella smile. And three, two, one. Jeez. Okay, everybody say, this land is mine. This land, land is mine. Is mine. Is mine. <laughs> All right, and give us your most, um, your most angst look, the character. Come on, give me, give me angst. Give me angst from your character. Yes, mm, come on. Angst from the host. Mm. Rebecca's angst like that. I have so cute in her face. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> And your best, I love you, Singapore smile. Hey, everybody. Love, love. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Thank you to all of you also for joining us on Facebook and Instagram for this fabulous, um, epic production and epic way of saying welcome to this land, which is mine. Wow. And of course, it is a very proud medical production to present the Singapore story. Amazing cast. Don't forget to watch This Land is Mine on National Day, 9th August on Me Watch, and same day at 9.30 p.m. on Channel 5 and 17 August on Medicop Drama on YouTube. Thank you once again for joining us. I'm Vanetta Lopez. And on behalf of Medicop and the cast of This Land is Mine, have a great week and we'll see you on National Day.